Hello, everybody. It's me, Andrea Patrick. Today is my Boss Talk Wednesday. I am here in my kitchen today and I am being Susie Homemaker, as you can see. See that? Got dinner on the stove. Let's show you what that is there. We've got some, don't judge me, some oven fried chicken breast. Let's call it saute, ha ha. And then I've got some yummy, yummy cabbage. There you go. And because I breaded the chicken or floured the chicken for all of my health nuts, we are only having cabbage and salad. We're not doing any other starch. So all of you who know that I'm trying to watch my beautiful figure, that's all I'm having, so. I don't wanna hear about it later. Anyway, so today guys, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about five tips to tackle overwhelm. I understand as entrepreneurs, startups, professionals, moms, dads, it's really hard sometimes to get everything done. And I, a long time ago, gave up the I'm every woman thing. I've decided that I don't even want that title. I'm gonna do what I can do and I'm gonna make sure I make time for myself. But anyway, today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some tips to tackle overwhelm in your on your entrepreneurial journey. I feel it, I have girlfriends who are entrepreneurs that feel it. I have professional friends who feel it. And you know, just in general, there are some things that I have figured out through my journey and things that I coach on and teach my clients about on how to use the personification of their brand to eliminate or minimize some of that overwhelm in their business. And so I wanted to share with you some things that have sort of come up in this week that I've had to either coach someone about or guide someone through in my personal life. And I thought I was sharing with you and hopefully they are helpful. I know you hear my chicken cooking, but hey, I'm multitasking. You guys can understand that. This is real life people. But anyway, the first thing I want you to recognize when it comes to tackling the overwhelm is that you have to have an escape plan. And I put this one first because it has absolutely no with no bearings on the actual thing that is causing you the overwhelm. But I found this to be extremely helpful in my own life. I actually have boundaries with my family. When they were little, I've got three little girls. And when they were little on Saturday mornings, when they were able to tell what the number eight was, we had a digital clock upstairs and I would tell them they could not come downstairs until the clock said eight zero zero. And that was so that we, my husband and I didn't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning because they couldn't sleep and they wanted some cereal. I wanted them to start respecting some of the boundaries for my husband and myself. And so the older they got, they realized, okay, we can chill out. If we wake up early, you know, we just can't come downstairs until the clock says eight zero zero. And even to this day, our kids sort of respect the rule that daddy and mommy just, you know, we want that peacefulness first thing in the morning. So you need to have an escape plan. And this is, what I mean by this is to have a, I'm sorry about the lighting guys I'm in my kitchen, is to have a place that centers you. So like I mentioned, we used to tell our kids to, you know, stay upstairs until it was 800. Well, now my children recognize that my bedroom is my haven. So if I'm in my room and the door is closed, they don't come barging in. That is my place. That's my place of refuge. It's my escape. If I don't feel well, if I'm tired, if I just need a break from the day, I can go in my room and my kids and my husband also will sort of slowly or gingerly come into my space because they recognize that that's sort of my, my escape area. So when it comes to tackling the overwhelm, the first thing is to determine what your escape plan is going to be. It could be going for a walk. It could be talking to a girlfriend to calm down, you know, it could be taking a drive. It could be um, anything. Like I said, I go into my bedroom and I just sort of can, if I need quiet, I can turn off all the lights and take a, you know, take just a little rest where I lay on my bed and close my eyes. It could be that I wanna just watch a little Lifetime TV for a few minutes to just get away from the hustle and bustle of the day. So number one is to have an escape plan. Number two is to know the end game. Because a lot of times we get wrapped up in the forest, right? So you can't, no, we get wrapped up in the trees. That's what it is because the saying is you can't see the forest for the trees. So a lot of times we get wrapped up in 
the trees and we lose focus of what the end game actually is. Why are we doing this thing called life? What are we doing in our business? What are we doing in our professional life? Why are we on this rat race? So the idea of remembering what the end game is sort of gives us focus because then we can sort of get back on track towards what we need to do to make it to that end game. It also helps you to create calm in the midst of confusion because you can begin to center yourself again. And sometimes that means going back to your escape, your escape plan and getting centered. But if you know what the end game is, you can always do that. You always know, it's just like knowing North, you know, North, South, East and West, you can figure out which direction you need to go. If you know your end game, you can figure out what direction you need to take, what needs to be minimized in your life, what needs to be ramped up a little bit, what needs to be eliminated altogether or who, you know, whatever the case may be. You want to have an escape plan, but then also know your end game. And then the next is to have a diversion. There was a situation this week where someone in my life was really, really wanting something really, really badly. And they were struggling with the anxiety that came with not knowing or not having any control over the outcome. I just told them to take a step back and go in another direction. They had something else they could be focused on, something else that needed their attention, wasn't quite as pressing or caused that much anxiety as what was what she was wanting. So she was able to sort of take focus and divert that for focus off of the thing she really, really wanted that was causing her anxiety and overwhelm and focus on something else. She had a diversion. It wasn't something she created randomly or added to her plate. It was something that was already on her plate, something that already needed attention. She just wasn't giving it, you know, undivided attention. It wasn't that major of a project that she needed to oversee it, but it was something that she could concentrate her energy and anxiety on other than the thing that was causing her so much overwhelm and stress and anxiety. That is something else you can do. Another tip you can take to override that overwhelm or to deal with the overwhelm in your life. Okay, so number four is breathe. Now, I have to thank my really good friend, Dixie Nichols Reynolds. If you guys do not know her, please find her on Facebook or Instagram. And if you don't wanna do that, her website is Inside Outer Beauty. She is a health and wellness coach who participated in our Boss Mindset Initiative we did through my nonprofit last week. And guys, she in how many seconds does it take? 19 seconds was able to help us with our anxiety, help to calm us in 19 seconds. And she gave us the process which was a breathing technique. And I, Dixie, forgive me if you're watching, I do not remember the name of the technique, but I do remember four, seven, eight. So what she told us to do was to take a breath that is four seconds long, hold that breath for seven seconds, and then release that breath over an eight second period. So it looked like It looked like that. So it gives you time to sort of recenter yourself, recenter your focus, calm yourself down a little bit. I use this sometimes um, since I've learned it when my surroundings are frustrating me a bit. I have taken a minute to breathe in for a second, hold it for seven seconds and release it for eight seconds. I even taught it to my daughter this morning who is working at a um, daycare and she was talking about how the kids were a little rambunctious and my daughter is small and petite and she has a little soft voice and she was a little, she was like, mom, I just didn't know what to do. So this morning, just this morning, I was able to share with her this technique that could calm her and center her. And so you want to breathe when you feel like there is just overwhelm and there are things just sort of just coming in on you and you are stressed out. Take a little second to breathe. So now the last tip that I have for you is what I call the template technique. 
Now, I just had this conversation with my intern earlier, and I've had this conversation with clients, with people that I work with, my administrative assistant that I use. We all use, or I have everybody on, a project management tool. Now, the one I use is Asana. I happen to love it. But what I think is so interesting and awesome about this plan, this project management tool, and I'm sure a lot of them have the same thing, is that you can create templates. So for my social media uh, calendar, I have a template of things that I need to do throughout the course of the week to ensure that I get my social media things done on a regular basis. And then I just have a repeat on it so that each week it shows up in my Asana task list of things that I need to do. But I can create in my task list, it'll just say social media campaigns. But when you click on it, it has number one thing to do, number two thing to do, number three thing to do, so that I have a to-do list for that particular project and it repeats itself every week. Now, the reason this helps with overwhelm is because I don't have to think about it. Overwhelm comes from having or feeling like we need to remember things. And we have all these things swimming around in our head that need to get done and we can't remember what they were. We have a great idea while we're in the shower, we can't remember what the idea was by the time we get out. But if we use a project management tool like Asana, you can create templates for yourself. So then you don't have to think about things anymore. You can have a template for all kinds of things. My intern was talking about college and some things that he was struggling with in, on his daily schedule, daily routine. And I was like, create a project in Asana and then create a template for your daily routine so that every morning, now the only thing he has to remember is to check Asana because that's where the template will be. But the beauty of that is it, it there's an app for that. And so you can just put it in your app and guess what? It provides notifications. So it'll show up as a notification. So guys, it's really that simple. So guys, overwhelm is a part of life. It's a part of being an entrepreneur. It's a part of being a parent. It's part of being a professional. But the key is to come up with ways to tackle that overwhelm and make things a little bit easier for yourself. I'm sorry, my dog is crazy. That's what you can do, guys. You can, number one, create a place where you can escape, an escape plan. Number two, have an end game so that you have a place to center yourself and, and a path that you know you need to take. And then after you have an end game, that's when you need to create a diversion for yourself. This is not creating new work. This is just finding something else on your to-do list you can focus on so that the anxiety and the overwhelm of a particular project are not so intense because it takes your mind off of things. And then number four was to breathe. And that's where you're going to just take that four second eight beat. Thank you, Dixie, for that um, little tidbit. But you're gonna take that four, seven, eight beat and just pause, push the pause button so that you can get your bearings again. And that will help to calm you and calm that overwhelm also. And then lastly, finally, on my five tips to tackle overwhelm is to have a template technique. And again, I use Asana. I'm not getting paid to share Asana with you, but I do want you to think about finding a project management tool that you can use and create templates in so that you don't have to remember everything. It's an app for crying out loud. You can sit at the doctor's office. When a thought comes to you, you can jot it down in your project management tool as a task, as a note. You can create a conversation for people you're collaborating with. You can pass documents back and forth. But the biggest thing for me is I don't have to remember anything. I open it up every morning and I can check off my list what needs to be done. And that really minimizes my overwhelm. So I hope you enjoyed this Boss Talk Wednesday. I feel like these five tasks, these five tips to help you tackle your overwhelm are really good starts and will help you to release and minimize some of that anxiety that comes with um, your business, whether you're starting one, whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur, or whether you are a professional and you're trying to climb the corporate ladder. But just in case that did not do it, I have several other ways that you can get amazing content from Andrea Patrick Consulting. If you go to my website, andreapatrick.com, you will see I have a book that is now available in paperback. Actually, it's two books, guys. So you're getting two books for the price of one. And you can definitely um, make that purchase and I will ship that to you, a hard copy. Actually, it's, it's a paperback, but it's a hard copy. I have also a podcast and uh, I'm gonna have to let you guys go, but I hope you enjoyed today's Boss Talk Wednesday. Have a good night.